Yeah. Hi, Andrew. So, so I'm just I'm just having a look at your design project. So currently, the fittings. If I right click and I go to properties, I can see immediately that it's in um, EPSG four three two six, which is in decimal degrees. Okay, so that's going to be a problem. So let's say, for instance, I want a one point five kilometer buffer around this tap here and that tap there. Um, I could, for instance, just do this. Okay. And then in the bottom of my screen here, just type in buffer. Okay, then just double click on buffer. And then just say, I want to, I only want to do selected features only. But now look here, so it, it, already I'm getting a, a warning sign. So that's telling me there's going to be an issue. So if I made that 1,500 meters and just ran that, and then close that and then zoom to the layer extent, I mean, that's like, Kind of, okay, it's way more than the earth, you know, so uh, that's not ideal. So let's just remove that. So, and you see this little um, uh, graphic here that looks like a memory chip. That means that that is being cached in memory. So I can just delete that layer. It's not saved anyway. Okay, so so the problem is that the, the parent layer is in, uh, or the layer that we're trying to buffer is in decimal degrees. So what you can do, um, okay, so let's say we want to buffer these two. Tap one and tap uh, tap three and four. For instance, you just right click and then we'll just say export save selected features as. So we're only going to go selected features. Where should I put it? Um, let me go see if there's somewhere I can save it to. Yeah, I'm going to create a, a. I'm just going to create a temporary geo. Temporary geo package for this little example here. Okay, but now I need to make sure that the coordinate reference system is in EPSG. Well. Yeah, 32735, which is UTM zone 35 south, which is the, the meters uh, projection that we use for Burundi. So that all looks good. Save selected only, just say OK. OK, so now uh, there are our new taps. OK, so let's just uh, change this to something I can see, maybe just like a bigger, bigger orange tap. OK. So now if we run a buffer, so with that selected, we run the buffer again, and then we just type in here the 1500. Um, segments are how smooth the, the, the solar perimeter is. So I'll just bump that up to 10, make it a bit smoother. You can dissolve the result if you want to. I'm just gonna let it create um, separate buffers because you, you might find here now that these two taps are gonna, the buffer area is gonna overlap. So let's just leave that undissolved and then click run and close and that's what I mean you can see there are two buffers now if we put that underneath the uh, temporary fittings and then we just do a little measurement just to see um, we can see from there to the edge is like one and a half okay so now we know that that worked all right so let's say that worked for you and you you want to maybe um, yeah create a permanent layer so the other thing you could have done is over here where you when when you ran when you ran that buffer, um, the option here where it says create temporary, uh, there's an option there at the bottom where it says temporary layers. Over here you just go save to geo package, and uh, where is it? Let me just go and put it in that exact same geo package that I created for this little example. Uh, engineering temporary. There we go. Uh, output layer name can be buffer. I don't know what you like 10 10 segments okay let's run that close okay so now that is permanent um that one is temporary but if you had created a temporary one and you wanted it permanent you just go right click make permanent and then you know go and put it in the same place if uh, two Okay, so that you know, you if you if it's quite nice because sometimes you don't you're not sure if you're going to need a layer going forward, and so you create a temporary one first, and then you see actually oh, I'm going to use that. So then you can create a permanent layer from that temporary layer. Okay, so now let's say uh, in your example you want to be able to move it around. So first thing I'd like to do in this example is maybe open up the the attributes uh, or sorry the styling. So to go to buffer. And then for simple fill, I click on the color and then I'll just make, okay, first of all, I don't like that color very much. Let's make like a bright green, but then make it a transparent green, okay? 
and now you can see what's happening underneath it which is great so now we can see through it um, but if we want to move it around so you're suggesting you might want to move it around to position your tap so then we can start editing there and then there's a little um, uh, advanced digitizing toolbar so we're going to go and select that so we can click on this and go advanced digitizing toolbar okay, and one of the, the functions is this little feature here which is move feature so we can click on that and then click on a feature and then uh, move it around okay so now you can see for instance that these two uh, two taps that distance away will will cover that and then if you wanted to um, you can then create a centroid there's an option down here uh, send I'm just I'm just predicting that this might be something you want to do. Create a centroid uh, from the buffer. Okay, we'll go temporary for now. Run and this. Oh, that's something else. Let's close that and close that. Okay, so now I've got a, a centroid for those two um, buffers. So essentially, that would be your position of your tap. Just kind of imagining that that might be something you want to do. remove that. Okay, so okay we've got two but what if we wanted three then what you can do is just duplicate it's quite easy you just select oh, just make sure you've got the active layer selected select it and then there's an option to option here copy and move okay so let's just deselect a deselect thing use the copy and move option not just the move option so copy and move i'm clicking on that and then i'm going to put it down here for instance maybe maybe we want an overlap something like that Okay, so there we go. So now, move the uh, the buffer uh, probably got a whole bunch of different places. So we've got one, two, four, four, five now. Okay, so that's one option. Okay, something else I'm just going to show you quickly now, while I've got this video going is let's say we actually wanted to count the number of uh, households with. Yeah, um, I'm just starting in table creating a new field uh, let's actually just household instance uh, integers fine net now there's a function uh, uh, it's count polygon count points polygon points we want to count are the household we already selected our active layer which is our buffer which we're going to be running the algorithm for um, and then the count field is the one we created which is household they modify all features and what that does is it just uh, calculates and modifies the attribute save that so i'm going to stop editing save that uh, deselect all of the open up selected at for the attributes there's a new column with the amount of households that fall with that buffer. Okay, so I think that should be useful. Uh, let me know if uh, if it was um, yeah if it was useful. I hope the audio was okay on this this video, but um, I'll check that out now. But anyway, good luck with that. Uh, there's something else I wanted to show you, but uh, when it pops into my mind, I'll I'll maybe include it in a video similar to this. Okay, cheers.